Put this bad boy on. Uh oh. This looks little like a little for bad me. remake of Pulp Fiction. You put a T, right? You can put a T, you can put a T right here. And you want to feel what backside is all about. And you're going to go take your swing, nice and slow motion. And the guy that's back here is pulling, pulling you back. Oh, I would love that. You got to pull I, I back. Mean, would someone have shown, could, one of my pull coaches back. has shown me the hip coil back in Boom, the Boom, right there. Now you're stuck from right Boom. there. Boom. Boom. Yeah, now I can, just, I can sit right here. I did not hit That's like that. That's the feel. I'll tell you what, Lauren. I, I wouldn't want to be a hitting coach, but here with d row there's nothing better. He, 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 he'll, he'll just, whatever you tell him, hey, let's do this. He's, he's all in. You're not putting me in that, though. I'm not today. That, today not but, but we are going to talk <laughs> about how to get behind a baseball. And we can roll this tape because this dude right here has been behind a baseball all season. And I remember him a couple years ago in 2021 and 2022. Solaire, they would just go down and away on him, man. It was up and into your grill, down and away, soft. And he wasn't doing any much to it, but just diving at the ball. And, and for me, when I look at him, what he wanted to do was trying to be deep to the baseball, right? L being able to be behind a baseball. And look, in 2021, 2022, he was crashing like a sinking ship. I mean, he was diving forward. There was no extension backside. There was no connection. And I remember in the offseason, at my cage, we would talk all the time about, can you be a 300 hitter, right? Can you be a 280 hitter, 290 hitter? And he said, yeah, I feel like I can do that. I was like, well, the only way you can do that if you're laying off sliders. And what, this year, he's been laying off sliders a lot better. He's been doing a much better job of being connected with his backside. His, when, when I see him just kind of stepping at the baseball, mm. everything's quiet. And look at this, 1-0 count. When they're throwing you 1-0 count, 2-0 count sliders, and you're staying on them, and you're being able to pull them with backspin on them, it tells me that you're behind the baseball. And I love everything that this guy is doing right now because once you're hitting these breaking balls on hitters counts, when they throw you fastballs, it's pretty much game over. Yeah, and facing facing him quite a few times when he was in Kansas City. Stop was, it right there. That was the thing about him. It was always about the chase. You were always trying to get him to chase. That was that was his weakness. Once he stopped doing that, recognizing and having that pick recognition, you, there really wasn't much you can do as far as like trying to get him out away because he wasn't chasing that pitch away. You had to come in and he has that light tower power. My question is, do great hitters around you in a lineup make you better and make you understand that if you're a little bit more quiet, do you become a better hitter, right? Because you've been you've been around some good teams mm -hmm. and with some studs, right? Triple crown winners. No, it makes it, a big difference. It, it, it's got to, seeing them every day in the cage, seeing their batting practice, seeing their, the way they get prepared for a game, does it get, do you get better for it? Yeah, absolutely. I think when you're when you when you're surrounding yourself with guys like that, uh, it can definitely help in your approach. Now, sometimes it can be a, a little bit of, of a detriment because then sometimes guys try to do and, or emulate what someone else can do, and that's not you. You have to figure out what you can do, and then you take bits and pieces from other guys as well. And, and I think when a guy like, for example, I, you know, we can always talk about a rise, but be, seeing a guy like a rise controlling the strike zone, mm -hmm. always being in good counts, I'm seeing this dude right here being connected with his load back here. But when you keep going this, roll it a little slower, how soft he is. It feels like there's an egg down there. It, it, it just feels like every time you're down there and you're very soft with your landing, you're, you're able to be behind the baseball. And when you're behind the baseball, what happens? You're getting backspin, you're sitting on breaking balls, you can hit the ball the other way. Look, I, I think this kid right here is not only having a good year, but I think his year in the second half is going to be even better. That's what I'm seeing with Soler right well, now. Well, to your point there, when he loads there, a lot of times, I don't know if you felt this too, but a lot of times when I felt I was going good, there was like that slight hesitation that gave you that ability to recognize the pitch. Yep. Like yep. As you're loading up, a lot of times when you're going bad, you feel rushed, right? right? But when you're feeling good, like when you're loading up, there's that slight hesitation that gives you the ability to, to recognize ball or strike. You know, one thing I talked to Mike Tozar, he, he's a guy that kind of that hits with him in the offseason. I said, what do you got on Soler? Right, what do you got on him? What you guys work on in the offseason? And for the kids at home, you know, it's not just get in the batting cage and swing, 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 swing. Like, like yeah, that's great. You, you can swing and have volume swinging. There's also a, a training method into laying off baseballs. Like, you can actually work on that. And those are things that I did, right? When I would do flips, I would tell my hitting guy, whoever was flipping to me, throw me about 
three strikes and six balls. And I want to see if I can take those balls. And I want to see if I can be behind the baseball. And, and for kids at home, what is behind the baseball? Behind the baseball is when you can see the bottom half of the ball as it's coming. When you're not behind the baseball, the bottom half of the baseball is completely gone and all you see is the top of the baseball. That's when you know in flips or when, when you're hitting machine, if you can see the whole baseball, that means you're behind it. If you can't see it and only the top of it or the side of it, it means you're either falling over or you're just on top of it. So for me, I, I always felt like I wanted to do those drills. Even if it was flips, it would get me ready mentally. My brain would kind of, my clock would hit to say, am I gonna swing here or am I not gonna swing here? It's so easy to be in flips and say, I'm just gonna swing at everything. Because yep. in the game, you're gonna swing at everything. So anyways, Practice I, I think purpose. this kid, this yeah. kid's gonna have a great second half and I can't wait to watch him.